The Mets, it's been such a great ride. And now they have to run into some, through no fault of their own, Mother Nature interfering with the pennant race. So tonight starts a three-game set with the Atlanta Braves in Atlanta. Tonight's going to be played. Wednesday and Thursday are huge, huge um, question marks because of the hurricane and the rain that will be accompanying it. And it throws everything uh, into, like, crazy town. Because, um, you know, we'll answer all the questions because I made a lot of phone calls before the show. Why not a doubleheader today? Why not at least schedule a doubleheader for tomorrow? We have answers to all those things. But let, let's talk about the ramifications of this. The Mets need to win two of these games and they clinch. But the most they could do is win one if the other two games are rained out. And then go on to Milwaukee. So those two games still might have to be played. And if they're played, they will be played on Monday as part of a doubleheader mm -hmm. in Atlanta, which would hurt both the Braves and the Mets, whichever team gets in, because you'd be going from that doubleheader right to the site of the wild, uh, the wild card first game. All the wild cards start on Tuesday. They don't want to move the wild cards. Uh, the only way they would is out of utter necessity if the double header got rained out and you still needed it to decide. But Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, those are the wild cards. It has to be that way because television has the ALDS starting and the NLDS starting over the weekend. So this is a lot of a mess today, Don. A lot of a mess. It would really help the Mets to win this game because if they win this game, then... You could take care of business in Milwaukee and never even have to think about making up those two games. I think tonight becomes really big to make really all the rain and the weather not matter. Their magic number is four. So if you win tonight, that reduces the magic number to two. So if all of a sudden you've got a magic number of two, which would mean a three-game lead with, with uh, five games to play, well, then they'll they'll find a way to make up those two games, maybe with a doubleheader on Monday. Well, if, if the Mets go out there and win two games against Milwaukee, Over. which isn't out of the realm of possibility, then those games won't be played. But, unless... but, but what, wait, there is a scenario where they have to be played, Don. Well, they can be played, but the Mets won't. The Mets will be there as far as physically, right? But mentally, they can have openers and and throw whoever they want out there because they're not going to need those games unless for some reason they feel like they can still get the number one wild card and home field advantage, but from just trying to get in. This should be more concerning to the Braves, who, who are probably going to need those games to be played more so than the Mets are going to need those games to be played. So if the Mets win tonight, I think they're golden, and maybe there's going to be no need for those games to be played. We'll have to wait and see. But it just in, in fact, of just trying to get in, Michael, because you've got the Padres and the Diamondbacks are going to play the last three games. So I guess there's a chance to gain ground, but we've talked about it. I don't think the Mets care if they finish as, you know, wild card two or three, and we'll see what happens. The Padres um, will have, uh, who do they have coming up? The Dodgers, and we'll see the Dodgers, um, how much they're going to uh, need it, I guess, for home field. But there is a possibility that, that those games may not matter, and the Braves are going to maybe need them way more than the Mets. So win tonight, and you're going to be in really, really good shape and not care. Lose tonight, and now the magic number stays at four, and now the gap's down to just one. Then, then you're probably wondering when those games will be played. Then it's definitely going to matter in some sense. So get a win tonight, and I think it becomes less of an issue. All right, let me give you the Mets starting lineup because, once again, I'll tell you right at the top, Lindor's not in the lineup. I Oh, okay. So now we're talking eight, eight well, days he's missed. Uh, huh. yeah. I, I said to huh. myself today that if he was not in the lineup today, I don't think you're going to see him the rest of the regular season. Mm. Because, because if there's a because you're not going to play him in a double header. I, I, well, he could play is, one of the games. But this is a big. If he's not ready today, why would you think he'd be ready tomorrow? Again, I don't want to rule out the entire uh, rest of the regular season because again, it's not until Sunday. But God, this is this is such a colossally big game. If he's not ready today, why would I think he'd be ready tomorrow? And why would I be confident that he'd be ready for any of these games down the stretch? And what he said on Sunday also concerned me. He said mm -hmm. when he does come back and play, he's going to be playing in pain the rest of the year. That's not good, especially when it comes to a back. So one misstep, one bad turn, yeah. and it's going to blow out again. So you do wonder what's going on. Here's the lineup for tonight. Second base is Jose Iglesias. Left field, Brandon Nimmo. Right field, Starling Marte. 
The first baseman is Pete Alonzo. Jesse Winker, the DH, will bat fifth, batting sixth, playing third base Mark Vientos. Tyrone Taylor in center field is going to bat seventh, batting eighth and catching Francisco Alvarez. And the shortstop is Luis Angel Acuna, batting ninth. Yeah. And the pitcher for the Mets will be Luis Severino. And, and the reason why this is interesting in, in what could be a positive is there's no place for Acuna when Lindor comes back. It doesn't feel like, unless you're going to play him in the outfield, you know, maybe he replaces uh, Bader, who's been really struggling or something. But I, I think you like Acuna in there. He's been really good. He's been a spark plug for him. Now, I don't want it at the expense of Lindor, but I guess there is a silver lining in the fact that we get to see a little bit more of Acuna here. Now, let me give you, while we're at it, I'll give you the Yankees starting lineup on 880 ESPN. It's Might as well. Nick T. Yankees could clinch the East today. Uh, so the magic number to clinch the East is one. The magic number to clinch the best record in the American League is three. So this is the Yankees-Orioles tonight. Glaber Torres at second base leads off. Juan Soto on right. Aaron Judge in center. Cleaning up the catcher, Austin Wells. John Carlos Stanton will DH. He'll bat fifth. Batting six point third base, Jazz Chisholm Jr. Anthony Rizzo at first will bat in the seventh hole. Batting eighth playing shortstop Anthony Volpe and batting ninth and playing left field it's Alex Verdugo with Clark Schmidt on the mound against Dean Kramer. Uh, That is uh, tonight's Yankees starting lineup brought to you by Bigelow T. Bigelow T is a proud supporter of the Michael K show and the official hot tea of the Yankees so let me tell you about uh, the specifics of the double header Um, they didn't want to move one of the games to a double header today Like, it's supposed to be raining badly Wednesday and Thursday. So, Mm -hmm. in all likelihood, those games will be rained out. So, a lot of the questions that will be asked today, and you can ask them again if you'd like, uh, why not just have the doubleheader today? Um, So, I talked to a lot of people, a couple people in Major League Baseball. Uh, Competitive ramifications. You want to avoid a doubleheader at all costs. Now, they're doing it in Detroit, but... I guess they had no other option. This one, you want to avoid a doubleheader at all costs where it would really mess with the pitching uh, for both teams. Number two, this is also weird. Nobody would think of this. The Braves ballpark is in a corporate plaza. There are a lot of businesses, big buildings with offices and everything in those buildings. And it's a very difficult situation for the Braves during the week to have a day, night, or any kind of day doubleheader or or any kind of day game because they don't have the parking because the people that are in the buildings are in the parking. So you'd have to arrange before time, and they just don't have that time to move it around. Number three would be the fans, where... You know, if if tomorrow's game is rained out and then they have a doubleheader on Thursday and for some reason the rain stops on Thursday, well, you can make the argument there was no other option other than to rain out yesterday's game and the fans would then have the option of going the next day. But if you take a game in the future and move it to the present, the fans are going to be screaming and going, that's not right. We, we had tickets for tomorrow. We can't get there today in the day. So that was something as well. Um, and those are three of the main mm. things right there. And, and the, the, the um, contingency that they have, if Wednesday and Thursday is rained out, there will be a doubleheader on Monday. And that doubleheader could quickly be moved to a single game mm. if the first game accomplishes everything that needs to be accomplished. They don't want the doubleheader. No. But we've known about this hurricane for a couple of days. And as far as the competitiveness, well, if both teams are going through it, then I think it's all fair. But you said about, well, you're letting the the, the, the pitcher that would be going on Wednesday now having to pitch on Tuesday. Well, that's happening to the Braves. It's happening to the Mets. But you so probably won't be able. To, you, you can't move pitchers back on short rest, so you'd have to start a bullpen day for right, the so second game. But, so the Braves and the Mets would both have to use a bullpen. For, so competitive, there's, there's no advantage. They're both going through it. So I would think that's very that that's fair. And listen, I want to see the fans, but it, I, I can't. I've got to do what's right for the integrity of the games. You talk about competition, right? That they're from a competitive imbalance because of what the, the doubleheader today. If they were to announce that, say, on Sunday, that we're going to have a doubleheader on Tuesday because of the hurricane, wherever they announced it yesterday. Well, what about the competitive imbalance for the Mets, who might have to travel from Milwaukee to now have to go to Atlanta to play that doubleheader potentially on Monday? 
Like is that is that is that fair for them? Well, because but that, that that would be a last resort. That would be the only thing right. you can do. They feel but, that there's you know you you kind of kicking the can down the road, and Monday might not even have to take place. As you said, if the Mets win three games, they're done. The only reason they have to play that Monday game is if the Braves and the Diamondbacks are battling for the third spot. It's just so crazy because it, we've talked about this, and I know it gets to repetitive. That's a brand new building. Why, why isn't there a retractable roof? Why? That's a joke. Why? It, you know, it's a joke because here is something that's really exciting, and it's fun. Baseball has a lot of really interesting series coming down to the nub here. Divisions still have not been clinched. Best records have not been clinched. You've got wild cards open in both leagues. You've got two rivals playing each other over three days, but because of the rain... It might only be one day and then two off days and then scrambling for these games to possibly be played on Monday if they're needed. And maybe they're going to be needed for only one team and not the other team, which means the other team is just going to be going through the motions. Uh, it just – that's what just stinks. It wouldn't happen in any other sport, right? Basketball, hockey, football. Yeah, maybe there would be weather issues, but they – but way less than what you have with just simple rain that's going to happen. I just don't know why you would open up a new ballpark that just opened and not have a retractable dome. It's just, it's ridiculous. Here's the thing that I say, and I, I think this, this sums it up as best we can, okay? They're having the same problems today. The same problems today that Connie Mack had in 1932. Think about it. A hundred years ago, let's make it 1924, Connie right. Mack was deciding, do I rain this game out? Do I play? I mean, ha have we evolved at all? Since no. since they have been able to build retractable roofs, the, the now we, we, can, we can scream all we want because the ship has sailed, as they like to say. They built these new ballparks without the retractable roofs. So it's going to be another 50 years before they build new ones. The fact that it wasn't ordered, that, that baseball is not like in Sportsman Park in St. Louis anymore, the same John McGraw, Connie Mack, the same arguments they're having. Think about that. This is baseball. Talk about history. Talk about tradition. Well, we're still living what they lived all those years ago. Uh, it's it's in, unfathomable to me. Unfathomable. And I know it costs a lot to put a dome. I get it. It's worth it. Once you put a dome on any kind of stadium, then you could have concerts. It could be a year-round venue. Uh, it just it's it's so frustrating. I mean, we announce it now. Any new stadium is not allowed to be built unless it has a retractable. Yeah, at the very least, do that. And you say, well, fifty years? Why? Uh, the, uh, the the Braves have played in three different stadiums over the last twenty five years. Right. This one's just built. They just built it after just building Turner Field after uh, Fulton County Stadium. So uh, uh, you say that it's going to be 50 years, but who knows? Somebody will get the bright idea. Hey, listen, we need bigger suites. We need uh, a, a, a wider concourse. So we're going to buy. We're going to have a new building. Okay. Well, if you have a new building, don't even think about putting it up. Don't even don't even call the architect unless he's putting a retractable dome or a dome in because we just can't have this happen anymore. It's not it's not the 19th century for God's sake. It's not the 20th century. The 21st century. We have the technology and and you can have your attention on your sport. There's nothing else going on until the Giants play the Cowboys on Thursday, right? Attention to baseball. That's what you're looking for. Eyeballs on your sport. Big series. Mets Braves. It'll be exciting tonight. But then you'll have nothing on Wednesday and Thursday. And I looked at the forecast, Michael. There's almost no shot of anything happening I'm wondering, on Wednesday or Thursday. I'm wondering, Don, why don't they move it right now to a neutral site? Because you could skip over Wednesday and do a doubleheader on Thursday at a neutral site. Why don't you do that? Because they probably the Braves would complain about the gate. But so the gate's not going to happen. But, but it could potentially happen if they have to play a doubleheader on Monday. People will go if it means their team's got a chance to make the playoffs and they'll get the gate. I don't know. Then Major League Baseball's got money. You've talked about how Major League Baseball's flush with cash. Reimburse the Braves. How much money would you have made if you had a sold-out building for two days? All right, we'll give it to you. Play these games wherever you can play them. I'm trying to think what the new, what would be the closest Miami. neutral site from Atlanta. Miami. All right, Miami. Right? Where are the Marlins? The Marlins are in Toronto. Perfect. The building's open. Go play there. Give them X amount of dollars. What, I don't know. What would you have to give them? Four or five million dollars? Give it to them. Let's get these games played. Well, those are Diamond Notes brought to you by London Jewelers. Visit London Jewelers today at any of their seven locations, including the Americana Mall and the Mall at Short Hill. Well, you know what I always root for, right? I do root chaos. for chaos. But the, the most chaotic thing that could happen. 
I hope that sometime in my life, the Minnesota Twins make the World Series. And you know that thousands of people will be hospitalized because of hypothermia. <laughs> and the they built a new off. ballpark in Minneapolis, this. Minnesota, right. without a roof. Well, but luckily, it, the Twins play there, so... It Unless can Kirby happen. Puckett's it's happened twice before. Yeah, but that was a long time ago. That was 30 years ago. And as long as they have to play the Yankees, Michael, to get there, no shot. I could put on. I can put on the interlocking NY and pitch a shutout. Wow. Strong. My, 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 Michael, it, it, well, in the last 162 games, the Yankees would have, like, the greatest record in the history of baseball. Yeah, literally. They play the Twins, so nah, I'm not worried about it. Yeah, I, I know that you want that chaos. And and but this chaos is bad for the sport. No, this right is now, awful. It's bad for the sport. I mean, the Braves have a national following going back to their TBS days. The Mets are a huge story. There's going to be a lot of attention on what could be a lot of fun for the next three days, and you'll get it tonight. But then Wednesday, Thursday, forget it. No, but Thursday, everybody will be okay because there'll be a football game for people to watch. So baseball's only hurting themselves, man. Uh, if, and, and most people around, the, this is the one time, it's a regional sport, right? But this is the one time you might get people outside the New York and Atlanta market to watch those games. Like Major League Baseball edict is these games have to be played. Tampa and, and Miami are not home. Those buildings are available. Go play in a neutral site. Get these games played. Reimburse the Braves for their home gate. Get these games played. The overwhelming majority of people that consume the sport would be consuming it over the over television anyway. Get these games played. That should be the edict inside that building. Yeah, it, it takes a, a potentially thrilling three-game set, and now you're just worried about weather rather about the games. Right, because I want to talk about how, of all teams, Michael, it's the Braves. Mets aren't battling for that third wild card against anybody else but the one nemesis. Their nemesis. The team that knocked them to the wild card in 22. The team that knocked them out in 99. The reason the Mets went to the World Series in 2000 because they didn't have to face the Braves. There it is. Slaying dragons left and right. This is Game of Thrones for the Mets. They got a chance to take down the Braves. And what are we talking about? Rain. It's, it's absurd. If I, was doing, if I was doing a radio show with Marconi, this should be a problem. And but I'm doing a radio show with Michael K. And Connie Mack would be no, on well, the no, 330th no. thought. Right, it would be right. Marconi's show. First guest is Connie Mack. Honus yeah. Wagner, big no, 5 no, o'clock our, spot. Our, our first guest, the Brooklyn Dodgers, just called up Casey Stengel at the end of the season. Wow. We're going to get young Casey's thought on the upcoming playoffs. Young Casey.